To break a world record in athletics, it takes a level of talent at the event that's among the best in history, along with the athlete executing the race close to perfection on the day. Whether a world record happens or not is also dependent on the circumstances outside the athlete's control, such as the venue of the race and also the weather conditions. If we look at the 15 times the 100 meter world record was officially broken and not later rescinded, on none of these occasions was there a headwind during the race. When we take the average tailwind from all of the record breaking performances, we get a result of plus 1.1, with the strongest tailwind being the plus 1.9 during Leroy Burrell's record in 1991. It is estimated that a race with the maximum allowable tailwind of 2 meters per second can improve an athlete's finishing time by approximately 1% compared to if they ran in the same race with zero wind. When it comes to breaking world records, running 1% faster takes a significant chunk of time off the clock, but tailwind is an only variable that has an impact on whether an athlete can shave an extra few hundreds of his best ever time. Reaction time is also a massive factor when it comes to finishing hundreds of a second faster. The difference between a lightning quick reaction of 0.11 and a slow reaction of 0.19 can be the difference between an athlete running this or this. One of these times is usually enough to make it into a major 100m final, while the other usually means semi-final elimination. So what if there's a race where an athlete got an almost perfect reaction to the gun? and a tailwind of exactly 2.0 as well as warm, dry weather conditions. Devin Allen has shown that a post-gun reaction time of 0.99 is possible, despite it not being legal. So had Bolt gotten a reaction of exactly 0.10 in Berlin in 2009, along with a 2 meter per second tailwind, his finishing time may have been as fast as 9.49. Surprisingly, there actually has been a world record race where almost identical conditions have played out. In 2002, Tim Montgomery lined up for the 100 meters final at the Paris Grand Prix in weather of 21 degrees Celsius and got an almost perfect reaction to the gun with a reaction time of 0.104 in his world record breaking race of 9.78. The wind rating for this race was a tailwind of 2.0 meters per second. So it is one of those very rare races where both the reaction time and conditions were perfect for the athlete to produce the fastest time he possibly could. Montgomery's personal best prior to that race was the 9.84 he ran in Oslo in 2002 and he also recorded the time of 9.85 in his second place finish at the World Championships final the year prior. The final was run into a slight headwind of 0.02 which gives us a reference for how fast he could run without the maximum allowable tailwind. Both his silver medal in 01 and his world record in 02 were rescinded in 2005 after he was found guilty of using performance enhancing drugs. A time of 9.85 was among the elites of sprinting, but Montgomery admitted to beginning his use of PEDs prior to the Sydney Olympics in 2000, a year where he ran a season's best of 10.01. His personal best prior to this was the 9.92 he ran in 1997, but this season was an outlier for him as he recorded 6 sub-10 finishes, while he was not able to produce a sub-10 finish in any other seasons until 2001 onwards. If we give Montgomery the benefit of the doubt, and say he was clean when he ran 9.92, given that his performances from the 90s remain in the World Athletics records, then we could say that he was a true 9.9 slash 10 sprinter. With this in mind, he's possibly been one of the least dominant 100 meter world record breakers ever. I make this case because with other sprinters before him who broke the record, they usually had a spell of dominance in the sport and were dropping times that are trending closer to the record or they managed to repeat another similarly fast time afterwards. He did manage to run in the mid 9.8s beforehand, but I don't think this was seen as much of an indicator that he had world record breaking potential, seeing as Maurice Green, who he struggled to beat, was the world record holder and clearly dominant sprinter at the time. Montgomery seems to be one of those cases of having good natural talent based on his youth performances and exceptional top end speed, but he lacked the starting prowess and explosiveness of his competitors at the time. The fact that he held the crown as the world's fastest man for several years does seem strange to look back on but it goes to show just what's possible in athletics, when the stars align so that all circumstances are in the athlete's favour on the day to support a near ideal race execution.